Hello and welcome everyone. Today I'm going to teach you about uh, creating web APIs with ASP.NET Core. So this article is based on a Microsoft documentation which will be given in the video description. And this tutorial shows how to use controllers for handling API request, application programming interface requests, and it discusses controller base class and attributes. Okay, so those of you who have not gone through the um, playlist of ASP.NET Core tutorials or ASP.NET Core Web API tutorials on this channel, I strongly suggest you subscribe to this channel and go through um, courses on the ASP.NET Core API before coming to this tutorial. So what is a controller based class? A controller based class is a base class for controllers basically that's what it is a web api has one or more controller classes that derive from the controller base for example the web api project template creates a values controller so if you create a web api with the asp.net core any version i will just show you in a minute how you create it unless you are already sure about it now let's flip over to visual studio so I will switch over to Visual Studio Preview version because I wanted to show you ASP.NET Core 3. Okay, so Visual Studio Preview window is opening in front of you. All right, so create a new project. I'll click on this. And this brings me all these uh, recent project templates. So that I've got this ASP.NET Core web application was the recent one. If I click on this one and then click on next. All right, so let me browse to my location where I would like it to be stored, saved, which is my G drive, YouTube channel, project for videos and there is a web API demo but I will create another one I will select this one so name this web API test or something anything that you'd like all right click on create Okay, so I will go with this web, this API template and you've got other templates like web application model view controller for MVC, web application, MT. So I'll go with API and then click on create, configure for HTTPs. All right, so web API test is created for me this within this solution and it has got a weather forecast.cs by default. This is a model for weather forecast, public class weather forecast. It has got a few properties, public properties, date, temperature in centigrade, temperature Fahrenheit from centigrade. And it has got a controller, which is weather forecast controllers. Right. So if you now run this application, click on this IIS Express. So now it is loaded on the browser with um, this local host, this port 44310 and weather forecasts. Wow, then this is, you can remember, this is a JSON, JSON output, okay? As opposed to, you know, a nice looking website, web form, it is just a raw JSON output, which gives you date, temperature, temperature in centigrade and Fahrenheit and summary. Right, so how it comes now, let us, now do one thing, close this window. And so right click on the controllers folder and I can add a controller. I can create an MVC controller empty or controller with read write action. There's so many things. 
these are M MVC controllers, sorry, and API controller. Within API controller, I've got empty and then controller with read write action, which I will go through because it will create a template code for me. Um, and I can get from there. So let me call this uh, home controller. So at the moment it is scaffolding. Now updating dependency, building the project, generating code now. All right, now we can see that the home controller is already created for me with the template code stub of a code. So you can see just a moment, you know, this, um, please pay attention on this route. This route attribute with API slash controller that gets you, gives you an idea that on the browser, what should be the URL routing. So it will be API slash the controller and I have named it home. So it should be API slash home here. Okay. So that is the get request HTTP get it, it will return a new array of strings with value one and value two. And if I um, send a get request with an ID, say API slash home slash five, it will return the statement value, the, the string value. Okay, let's um, witness. So I have got this API slash home. Wow, it gives gives me this uh, value one value two, which basically comes from here, value one value two. And if I give it this UI, right? API slash home slash five, or for that matter, any ID, which is, I mean, it is accepting a number ID. So let's put any number to start with five. What do you expect? See value, okay? Even if you change the ID to six or seven or eight, it should be the same because the if you look into the code, you can see that it returns the string value, no matter what the ID is. So that's what I wanted to show you. And HTTP put and HTTP post requests are not returning anything. So we will leave it at that. So it actually derives from controller base, the values controller by default. Now, it says that avoid creating a web API controlled by deriving from the controller class. Now controller derives from controller base and adds support for views. So it's for handling web pages, not really the web API request. The exception to this rule is that if we plan to use the same controller for both views and APIs, derive it from, go along and derive it from the controller class directly rather than the controller base class. Now controller based class provides many properties and methods that are useful for handling HTTP requests. Like, you know, this code, it shows that there is an attribute route, root attribute. It actually has this property. The what is the root API slash controller. This within the square brackets controller means the controller name basically. So you have to look at, you know, this root on the web browser like, you know, localhost slash HTTP colon localhost slash the port number slash API slash what is the controller name. So if it is a values controller, so um, you don't need because that is the default. And uh, say if it is any other controller, say test controller. So you have to write test API slash test. Right. And then controller base class uh, has some methods. For example, controller base dot created at action returns a 201 status code after having created, uh, I mean, responded to a create request. So this is a snippet of a code written in the Microsoft documentation in the video description. And uh, I will, this is a sort of, this is an unfinished or, you know, uh, incomplete code, but I, I guess they wanted to just make it as a representational code to drive home a point. Now you can see that it returns a created at action, a name of get by ID and new 
id equals pet dot id so assume that pet is a model so which might contain some properties like id okay or pet name and then pets in memory store now this pets in memory store this is a memory in memory collection it could be just a list and uh, on which this any operator is um, applied any is any is method actually okay so attributes the microsoft dot asp net core dot mvc namespace provides attributes that can be used to configure the behavior of web api controllers and action methods now following examples use attributes to specify the http method accepted and the yes, status codes return so this http post attribute is important to for this action method again the same a uh, code snippet that is reproduced which i just talked earlier in the last slide so this is returning an action result of type pet and it has got a produces response type status code dot status 201 created so uh, you can see that it is a create request so it's a http post type of request post is for creating a new object okay so those who come from the mvc background uh, or even with prior <coughs> excuse me um knowledge of uh, web api you may be familiar with that you know create actually creates an object or um, like here in this case it is adding to a in memory store uh, an object of uh, type pet okay and it returns a created that action which actually is expected to return this status code 201 created status code code okay and there are some more examples of attributes as shown route attribute specifies url pattern for a controller or action we have seen it in the first slide and then bind attribute specifies pre prefix and properties to include for model binding and http get identifies an action that supports the http get method and i suggest that you should google for model binding there are plenty of tutorials on google for my from microsoft and other providers you know uh, proper documentation so you can go through this to understand what this model binding means and consumes attribute specifies data type that an action accepts and specifies this produces attribute specifies data types that an action returns so one is for uh, the data type that the action accepts and one is for return produces so that's all for today thank you